Merhaba. Hello. <clears throat> I've got a bunch of books recently, like this last week or so. And these are some of those books. There's quite a few of them. Uh, the Demand for Dignity in the Politics of Resentment, Francis Fukuyama. I know nothing about this book, actually, besides the cover. I didn't even read the back. When I saw this in the bookstore, I immediately said, it's Francis Fukuyama. I would like to read all of his books. I will just get this. That was my reasoning. <laughs> Shoe dog, Phil Knight. So people uh, have been talking to me about business books. I asked them in an Instagram post asking for more business books. People recommended this, okay? Um, my suspicion is that because it's like a memoir style, that as a result, it might not actually be the kind of book I'm looking for. I want stuff that's more heavy on data. And even when I skimmed through it, I did not see a lot of charts or even like smart, smart graphs or anything like that. We'll see. How, how it goes. Um, the, the, the only pro of this is that it's not a tech book. A lot of business books are about tech. It's quite annoying. Uh, the expressions of the emotions in men and animals. I basically, it's kind of demented, uh, but I saw it. I mean, saw, obviously it's got water damage. When I saw it, I was like, well, you know, I actually don't have this book yet. I still don't think I do. And it was super cheap, so I decided to get it. Um, the Billionaire's Apprentice, the rise, in, the rise of the Indian American Elite, and the fall of the Galleon Hedge Fund. So, to be honest, I know nothing about this book, but uh, it was recommended to me as a really good business book. Uh, one of the best ones that was more recently published, I think. I will give it a read. Um, I don't see a lot of graphs in it, again, which makes me concerned because I did want something heavy in data, yada, yada, yada. But we'll see how this goes as well. A promised land by Barack Obama. So I don't really care for books written by presidents in general. I don't care for them. But I tell the I I just look, I, I opened this one up. I after seeing it, I've looked at it in the bookstores for over like a year and a half now. And I opened it up and I gave some reading. And I thought, well, you know what? It's time to get past like my stigma or like my, my bias. I'll read it because I, w I don't usually read it. And the, the writing style is not that bad. And he does actually talk about <clears throat> US politics inside the book. So I'll give it a read, but I expect it to be extremely biased. Um, Zucked. So I got this, again, because it's about a business that's very important in America. Um, it's a tech company, and I figured, well, it's probably not going to be that hard to read. I could probably read it in a week. So that's re the reason why I got it. We'll see how that goes. Uh, the Upstarts. I think I started the ebook for this when it first came out. But I figured out now I'll get the actual paperback. Uh, Brad Stone is a very famous business writer. Um, he's not as good as Scott Galloway, though. Scott Galloway is way more impressive in my books. So I'll read this and um, see what I can learn. Again, it's a business book about tech, though. So many business books, all, all tech. Uh, this one I just saw in the bookstore. And since, again, I am trying to read more business books, and I do own Amazon stonks now, uh, I will... I will read more about Amazon. Um, and this one actually has data as well, <laughs> which is great. That was another benefit of this book. Farewell Kabul. Uh, when I saw this, I immediately went, wow, this is going to be a great read. She was a journalist, I think, in Pakistan first, but then went over to Kabul um, as time went on. And she basically just is going <clears> to <throat> recount her experiences there. And in my experience, usually if the journalist is in the country, they have a pretty decent take. They, they tend to not be too biased. Uh, Thomas Friedman is one example of this. Um, Tim Marshall is another great example. Almost in every Tim Marshall book I've read, he criticizes virtually everybody who's involved in a conflict. They all have wrongdoings. Uh, 
uh, Lawrence Friedman, The Future of War and History. So I got this obviously because of the Ukraine conflict. I wanted to see what people were actually going to say about the future of warfare in general. The Ukraine conflict has changed uh, my perceptions about the nature of warfare more significantly. I knew, for example, that drones were going to be involved in combat. I did not know they would be this heavily involved in combat. Um, I didn't know that we'd have uh, basically um, suicide drones attacking uh, civilian infrastructure. That's pretty, uh, like I didn't expect this stuff to happen for like another 70 or 80 years. The fact that it's already happening now means I am very out of date on the nature of warfare. Um, I hope this book talks about, there's, there's this one type of drone that the US has uh, where it basically it's like a loitering munitions drone and it sits around and it has an algorithm that can identify the target that it's supposed to kill and so it kind of makes like a localized decision uh, like you predetermine it to make that decision and then it's basically on a timer or not a timer but like it's basically waiting for a, a local condition to be recognized and then it kind of uses the algorithm to execute the kill that drone is very controversial and I hope this book talks about it um, but we'll see The Weirdest People in the World, How the West Became Psychologically Peculiar and Particularly Prosperous. I was born and raised in Canada. Actually, I guess I have this Western uh, worldview slightly. Um, and I thought it was kind of interesting to say that the West is weird. I thought like things like democracy would be the norm, but what he's saying is actually things like democracy would not be the norm. It is actually an extremely weird thing to have democracy. So this will be an interesting book. Uh, Radical Honesty. I got this book a while ago, to be quite frank, maybe three weeks ago. I just haven't had enough new books to justify making a library tour video about it. Um, this book is just the idea that you should be radically honest and how radical honesty can change your life. So for, so for example, rather than censoring your opinions about something because you know someone's gonna be upset, you're gonna instead assert your opinions and then go from there, kind of like not favoring social harmony over uh, your honest opinion. So if, yeah, if your honest opinion is not rude, you're not being rude about it, right? If your honest opinion upsets social harmony, you shouldn't self-censor. That's kind of the idea behind this book. I think that's always been an interesting topic. I've never really studied it thoroughly. This one is again, is the philosophy and psychology of a neglected virtue, honesty. Um, I thought it would be a good, uh, like, supplementary, supplementary read to the Radical Honesty book because the Radical Honesty book is about behavioral change. I think this is gonna be more about philosophy uh, rather than behavior. An Intimate History of Humanity. This is just a book that I thought was extremely extremely interesting um, to give you an example let me find the uh, table of contents so how humans have repeatedly lost hope and how new encounters and new pairs new pair of spectacles revive them okay it's interesting how new forms of love have been invented why there has been more progress in cooking than in sex just like the <laughs> why compassion has flowered even in stony ground uh, how curiosity has become the key to freedom it's not like, um, the way it's written, it's very idiosyncratic, it's very unique. And the way it explores subjects is very unique. It really does feel like somebody was just reflecting on the nature of humanity and came across very interesting insights and put them into books. That's why I got that. George III, The Life and Reign of Britain's Most Misunderstood Monarch. So Andrew Roberts is has tons and tons of biographies on very famous people. This guy is a good, good biographical writer. He is up there with uh, Walter Isaacson for me. In fact, he might even be pushing Walter Isaacson off uh, the number one spot for me. But this book, I got it because I thought, it, I'm not really particularly really interested in George III, but I got it because one, he's gonna argue that uh, a lot of the things that are said about George III are misunderstood. He's going to basically re reframe it. He's going to say that, like for example, something that's perceived as harsh was actually in favor of the country. So there's a, obviously a controversial claim being made about the nature of George III. But in addition to this, um, it's a, it looks like a masterpiece in scholarship. Like it's very, very well researched, and obviously there's going to be a lot of ideas in here about George III. So there's a lot to digest here. It's going to be a good book, in my opinion, even if I don't agree with it. 
That's why I got it. And then the last one <clears throat> that I got was an accounting book. Um, I have some finance textbooks and I've done some accounting before, but I want to get better at accounting. I want to learn more accounting concepts. I learned to think more like an accountant as opposed to thinking about like thinking the way someone in finance would think. So that's why I got this book. And actually, to be honest, I got this book extremely cheap. I, I, uh, I got it for the equivalent of um, 16 US dollars. This should be like 150 US dollars, in my, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> that's usually what accounting books go for, right? But I got it, yeah, 16 US dollars. So this I'll, I'll read as well. So those are the new books that I got recently. Um, if you have any books that you want me to buy in the future, read in the future, let me know. But uh, with that being said, bye-bye.